thank you for doing this. We're such fans of yours. My name is Dan. This is Sam. We've been recapping the season and following your journey. So thanks for taking some time with us. Yeah. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Sam and I were just talking about this, Karen. I'm going to go out on a limb and say something. I think that you are the most interesting contestant <laughs> in Top Chef history, because let me get this correct. You are a powerlifting former cheerleader, <laughs> studied musical theater, and cooks for a living while standing Kelly Clarkson. So what, my question for you, Karen, what is it like to be so fascinating? You know, here's what I'll say about that. I think I'm fascinating to a very small group of people. Us. Us. You guys. People it might just be us. you guys and my mom. There actually. you go. My happy, mom happy. Like, wow. My mom the other day listened to a podcast I was on and was like, really? I just found out some things I didn't know about you. And I was like, really, mom? Seriously? <laughs> I, yeah, I've had that experience too. I, yeah, I used to, I used to have a podcast and I would just like uh, talk and yeah, my, my parents would be like, oh, I never knew that about you. I was like, oh. Are yeah. you not paying attention? Do you not follow me on Instagram? No, I'm just Maybe kidding. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, no, I don't. I mean, I never think I'm very interesting. I'm always like, well, I do this one thing. I go to work and that's it. And I cook or whatever. But, you know, I'm, I'm also 42. I'll be 42 in September. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of life, right? Like, you know, sure. we, we've gone through all of these things before we get to sort of where we are. And hopefully... You know, I'll find some some new and interesting things as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't start cooking until I was in my 20s. So I've been doing and working in restaurants for a really long time. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, like, you know, I always say I started, I was a waitress in a diner in New Jersey. Um, and I never thought that this would be my entire career. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, I certainly couldn't imagine doing, I really can't imagine doing doing anything else but um powerlifting is the best one of the best things that's ever happened to me next to cooking um it is you know something i started about five years ago and um i i remember thinking i haven't had a hobby in 18 years something right. like well, that and you, well and you must spend so much time obviously i mean being a chef i've never been one professionally but i you know though from you what know. i know from watching the show and just things mean it's your life right I mean you have no right. time for yourself no so to do something that requires really you can't you cannot lift hundreds of pounds of weight and have your phone on you right it's not like being on the elliptical or the treadmill mm -hmm. or at the bike which I do that you know do that as well but like where you're like oh I'll just check my email while I'm watching the show or listening to whatever that's all you can do you can't think about it for me personally I'm sure other people can I can't think about anything else if I'm like, I'm trying to lift 200 pounds off the floor, 300 pounds, whatever it is, 180 pounds, 20 pounds, it doesn't matter. You can't think about anything else but that. So my mind actually gets to be clear because I'm not thinking, I really have to call my purveyor and see if he can get this thing in for me. Or I wonder how, if I'm paying more for pork now than I was last week. Right. I, I wonder if my dishwasher needs a raise. I wonder if somebody's going to call in sick. You can't think about anything else. Mm -hmm. um, so... For me, that's meditation, my brain actually being clear. I don't get that very often. And, you know, and also what it does, not just for your body, but what it does mentally saying, if I can do this, I can do anything. I think it's a really, um, you know, it's a really powerful. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful. To have. <laughs> it, it's, been so, it's been so interesting to see. We get a little bit of this like B-roll footage around the house of people exercising. We saw like malarkey's like, very oh, muscular body. Yes. <laughs> seen some people waking up at like 5 a.m. and like furiously ellipticaling. And we, we, of course, like saw you powerlifting, which was, I would say, like a gift from heaven. What <laughs> it, um, <laughs> what it, what's the deal with, I mean, like, when do we, when do you guys find time to do that? How do you get the weights to the house? And more generally, like, what is it like living in this enormous LA, like maybe haunted mansion? <laughs> it was definitely haunted. No, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> so, there isn't a lot of time. I mean, certainly, like, Gregory, I mean, Gregory's an athlete. Malarkey worked out all the time. I certainly didn't work out that much. And the reason, like, a couple of people have been like, why were there weights like that at your house? So they, and they, they may end up showing this, but Kevin is a power lifter as well. Oh. And so they had actually, he had had the foresight to sort of talk to folks about bringing in um, actual, like, 
45 pound plates and stuff like that beforehand. So, you know, which I certainly didn't. I was like, it'd be cool if I could have a bed to sleep in. Right. You know? <laughs> right. um, <laughs> so that for me was really a gift as well to be able to, you know, utilize, um, utilize actual, I always have like real, real weights, not that, you know, resistance workouts aren't, aren't that, but Right. Um, so that was, that was really cool. And that's sort of why, and they were out on the balcony and at some point I think we had to stop because they were worried about the balcony, like crumbling or something. <laughs> you would like that. That. And, um, you know, and we did have, we had a pool, so it wasn't like, you know, I mean, our days are very, you guys don't need me to tell you this, but like our days are very, very long. Totally. Um, so you're looking at anywhere from, you're looking at like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, depending on if it's an elimination day, 19 hour days, um, which is, you know, we all, it's, it was nobody's first rodeo. We all knew right. what we were signing up for. Um, but you do usually have a day where, um, you're doing interviews. So we're doing, I have a friend who calls it the confessional. I don't know if it was on some other reality TV show, but it will yeah. be like, when you were in the confessional, um, <laughs> but where you, where we, you know, that's, that's your work for the day. And so on those days we were able to, whether I, I swam as much as I could in, in, in the pool and, you know, working out or whatever it was. So yeah, well, you, get, you get a tiny, you get a little, a teeny downtime. Yeah. A little bit of time to yourself. You know, something that we've noticed is on this season, there was such a theme of female empowerment. And we saw that with you, especially, I mean, with like the Padma's angels to you sort of saying <laughs> where I'm from, they call me you chef. Guys want, you guys want shirts? Oh, yes. Karen, I've never I wanted anything more. If we could get a Karen okay, perfect, perfect. That's what I want to hear. You're making I, my day. Oh, my God. I saw. I know. I, those shirts are incredible. But, like, between that and, and you know, your, your heroic moment of saying, you know, where I'm from, they call me chef, too, which I think I stood up and clapped when you said that. There, oh, was, thank there, you. there was such this, this girl power, female empowerment mojo to the season that I really liked. You know, when you when you look at sort of the industry in general, outside of Top Chef, the food industry, do you think, you know, that's indicative of how things are, are moving there? I mean, in terms of female chefs and, and, you know, more women making names for themselves in the industry. You know, I think that we are making steps. I think that they are small and they are baby steps. And when I stop having to talk about it, you will know that we have gotten to a place where things are actually equal. I know that a lot of people, and myself included, I would love to say, you know, I don't want to have to say I'm a female chef. I'm a woman. I just put my head down and work hard. Yeah, I want that. I want that too. But equality, my own personal opinion, only for myself, I speak for nobody else. My own opinion is that equality has never happened by just hoping that it happens someday, right? It, it, it happens from people speaking up and taking action. And for me, I, you know, I just got to a place, I, I'm there, I've, you know, I was raised by my, by my mom who, you know, always said, there's nothing that you can't do. She used to sing me that song from Annie Oakley, that was the musical Annie Oakley, where it was, Annie, get your gun. Yeah. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. And she used sure. to sing that to my, my sister when we were little, little girls. Yeah. My, sister's, um, my sister is also a badass. She's a, a medical scientist. She's a PhD. She's a scientist. She wow. also works in a very like male dominated industry and has like an incredibly high powered job and you know is amazing and driven and competitive as much as I am and we it was was cool that she got to come and cook with me on the season yeah. um you know when i when i was in last chance kitchen and i said you know where i'm from they call me chef too that actually goes back i can't i can't take 100% credit for that my spouse lj this was a handful of years ago. I was at, I was cooking at an event in Miami um, with Isaac Tukes and his wife is a great friend of mine and is, and is good friends with LJ. So Isaac and I had to go prep. Amanda and LJ were like, we're, we're going to be at the hotel having drinks. Call us when you guys think you're coming home. So we get to the place and they were super nice to us. Super, I mean, super nice to me, accommodating. But every time they spoke to him, they said, chef, what do you need? And everybody, every time they spoke to me, they said, young lady, what do you need? Ooh, no, no, no. no. First of all, I'm not young. I'm old. <laughs> Second of all, I mean, thank you. And also, um, right. you know, and I, it was so the, the difference in it. Now they weren't any less kind or accommodating, but the difference in it to me was so striking. Yeah. And, you know, I, we had called 
uh, our spouses. And they were like, how's it going? Whatever. And I was like, it's pretty cool, except this guy keeps calling me young lady and calling Isaac chef. And LJ said to me, did you tell him that where you're from, they call you chef too? Oh, see, it all comes and back so to we, LJ. <laughs> and so we say that, like, we say that a fair amount. Now, the response in what I'll say about it is, um, I get that less now, you know, people know me a little, who I am a little bit more, whatever. But like, there were years where like, people would walk into the kitchen and assume whatever, like, male line cook or my sous chef was standing there, they would always assume that he was the chef. Mm -hmm. I had a woman when I worked in an open kitchen, she, I, and I'm the chef and I'm like cooking and expediting. And she was like, it's so like, it's so great watching you. Um, you're like a coach. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I was yeah. like, thank you. I, I actually really think of my job that way. Like my job is to get everyone to the finish line, you know, and so on and so forth. Like, that's really cool. And she goes, what's your actual job title? And I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm the chef. And she goes, oh, you are? I thought he was the chef. And I wanted to be like my saute cook that I've been yelling at all night. <laughs> you thought he was my boss? Right. Like, really? Right. Um, and the response that I've gotten from it, um, which I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, people might really hate me, and I'm sure people do, um, <laughs> for saying that. Who, who cares about those people? I don't, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's what it is. I said it. So, but the response that I've gotten is actually from women in all different industries all over the country mm. who have said, I'm a scientist and this happens to me. I'm a CEO and this happens to me. I'm a sommelier and this happens to me. I'm the general manager of a restaurant and this happens to me in all different industries all over the country. Mm -hmm. They have said, this happens to me all the time. I cried when you said that. I cheered when you said that because it's not a specific, I'm not, you know, it's not a specific person. I'm not saying like, you're a jerk for saying that. I'm saying societally, this is something that happens and still happens to women all the time. So... If we don't say stuff, nothing changes, right? Totally. And that's really, it, that's, like, we see it, that's sort of the nature of bias, right? Is that it's sort of, like, a little bit undetectable. And we saw it on, even on this season, you know, like, a couple of the male chefs had some weird names for women. <laughs> um, and it's, it is important, totally, to call it out. I work in a restaurant myself. My chef is female as well. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all my tables are, like, what is it, you know, like, Who's the chef? Like, what does he think right. about this? And like, put it on the menu. It's you know, you can see her in the kitchen. It's right. like, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's completely you know all over the place. This kind of bias. Yeah. Um, and that's society, right? Like, that's not that's what people are. That's just what we're taught, right? So if we don't start like teaching people aside from that something else, then perhaps people don't know. So. Yeah. I mean, people have done that to me. I run food at my restaurant all the I mean, back when we were actually open, <laughs> um, when there was a restaurant. Um, I ran food all the time. I love running food. I love dropping food at tables. And if I don't, you know, and I'm not wearing, I'm wearing like a t-shirt and an apron or whatever it is, I've definitely had, you know, people be like, oh, please tell your chef that this is. And I'm like, you know, let him know that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> There's literally not, my, my line is all women. I have one male line cook, Justin, and he's great. Um, and it certainly was not intentional, but our kitchen, my chef de cuisine is a woman, my sous chef is a woman, all my line cooks are women. My manager, my general manager is a woman, my AGM is a woman. I love so <laughs> I don't know who he thought was like, he, he was sitting at the counter that overlooks the very tiny kitchen that had right. only all women in it. So right. I don't know who he thought, you know. Yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, this is a, you're doing a lovely job transitioning into my next question, because I do want to ask about your restaurant. And I know that you and everybody else in the industry has had to really shift and, and yeah. adapt and, and find creative ways to stay successful. I know you guys at the restaurant are, are, are doing your best. And, you know, how challenging has that been to have to pivot so quickly in this in this crazy time? It was so hard. <laughs> guys. <laughs> I'm just very, you know, like, you may have been able to tell from the show, I'm very transparent all the time. Like yeah. I don't, you know, I, unfortunately the, one of the best and worst things about me combined is that I'm like face of truth all the time. And you just always know kind of where you stand. It's been really hard. We didn't close not for one day. Wow. Not for one day. We pivoted the, like we had one day of doing 50% capacity. We pivoted the next day to take out. I created a new business called Fox Pasta Boston, which is my wholesale pasta company. Fresh pasta, sauces, olives, giardinara, prosciutto. Um, I do Sunday suppers, all of that stuff. Basically created an entirely new business and then did take out as well. Um, 
and we opened we found out we had to shut down on a Sunday. We did 50% capacity on Monday. Tuesday, we opened with like two new Instagram accounts and saying like, okay, this is like how you can get, you know, we're doing takeout at night. You can get a limited menu of the Fox and the Knife items that everybody wants. And, you know, and we also have this wholesale pasta business. So you can come in and get fresh pasta and sauces and cook it at home. And here's the cooking instructions. And I think that for me, everyone's making the best decision for they can. For themselves that they can as a business owner it is wild times out there and so for me i i didn't i didn't know i didn't know what to do either but i couldn't imagine not trying yeah i didn't know if it would work but for me i was like how can i just this is my this is all i do right so like this is my whole life this is what i do i feed people and i'm gonna try really hard to put you know, I, I always say it was like putting six people in a lifeboat. I kept all of my managers on full salary. I'm paying 100% health insurance of all my employees that are furloughed. Um, we take all of the tips that we get from takeout and I disperse them between all of my employees that are working in furloughed. Um, so they get a check every two weeks. Um, and, you know, I just couldn't imagine not trying, not trying to do it for me. We we're small mm-hmm. enough. I thought we were nimble enough. Um, that we could, and, and my managers wanted to do it, right? Like everyone was like, we have to try, we have to try. Um, so every day, and then I did end up bringing two other people back to our team, my dishwasher, um, and my pasta maker, because we couldn't do it without her. Um, so there are, you know, four of us making all of the food. Wow. I work, I come in every day, my chef, my sous chef, and I do all of the prep. And then we work the line every night wow. um just the three of us That's crazy. And, and we've been doing that for two and a half months now and mm-hmm. i just thought if you know if the governor was like okay restaurants can do takeout and you're deemed an essential business i just you know i i took it very seriously to say okay if we're deemed essential then we need to we need to be that for people um and i think that you know it's especially on the days when it feels way too hard I trust me, I come home so many nights and I cry my face off. Like, that's just being honest. I'm like, this is so hard. Like, what is going on? How did this happen? This is crazy. You know, and then somebody will come in and say, like, thank you so much for making us feel normal in this time. Or like, send me something on Instagram and say, like, you thank you for making my birthday feel special. And then you're like, okay, that's why we, right? That's why we do it. If you can, if we can do it, you know, which we are, like, that's why we do it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it sounds like you really you really hit the ground running in terms of this pivot, which is I think like the best way to do it. We've seen a lot of restaurant. I mean, I'm in New York right now. We've seen a lot of restaurants oh, under in this, and it's been crazy. Um, when you uh, come home after working the line all day, you have a quick cry. Um, what? One, yeah, Something. a little cathartic cry. Totally. What happened? You know, what's what's the routine after that? What are you eating? What are you making for yourself? What are you binging? What's the deal? Oh gosh. Okay. What am I? I'm like mostly falling asleep. Um, <laughs> I am eating like uh, uh, chips and salsa. That is a, a big part of my diet currently. Okay. Um, I sometimes I've been trying to bring stuff home from, I eat a lot of sweet greens takeout. Nice. Um, and just like at home, like I'll like text LJ and be like, can you get me the herby fishy ricey plate? Um, <laughs> we try and order at the restaurant. We order takeout for our entire team from a local, like an independent restaurant once a week. Um, so we try and do that and support other people. I'm coming um, to work for you. You sound like the best boss. <laughs> I, tr- I don't know. Some days, like, I don't know. I try, but I'm also like, like benefits are we working hard it? enough? Is everyone doing their best? You know, I'm also making yeah, boss, What are you going to, what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, so I eat a lot of chips and salsa. Um, I drink a lot of polar seltzer. I really tried from the beginning. It's like, I, I'm like no, um, wine or drinking on school nights because it's oh, like Karen, too, it's too I hard. Wish, I yeah. wish. Girl. I can't, I can't, except for Top Chef nights, because I gotta have like, I'm like, can you open a bottle of French Corta? I'm gonna need to have a whole bottle of this to get, get through watching this nonsense. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and what am I binging? What are we watching? Um, I went back and I was watching all of 30 Rock. Nice. Um, I binged, oh, uh, Hollywood. 
<laughs> oh my God. If you're not watching it, watch it immediately. It's so good. I watched that in like five seconds. Um, yeah. Vita on Stars. I watched three seasons of Vita, which was amazing. Two of the best yeah. shows that I've seen um, in a long time. And I'll watch like weird stuff. Like we just started watching Alias, that show with Jennifer Garner from like a <laughs> from the beginning. Um, you know, so we'll watch. If not now, when? Yeah, if not now, when? We, you yeah. know, we went back and watched all of the, um, I love science fiction and comics and stuff like that. So like we had a period of time where we, you know, we watched all of the Marvel, like in chronological order. Cool. We watched all of, the, all of Star Wars in chronological order. Um, so a lot of, a lot of stuff like, stuff like that. Well, I'm glad you're finding time for, uh, for some entertainment despite being so busy. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. Important. We close on Mondays and Tuesdays. So, well, there you, go. you know, I get a little, I got a little break. Those are your Liz Lemon days. <laughs> <laughs> it's working on my night cheese. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, uh, <laughs> Mary, thank, you, uh, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to watch you this season, uh, you. get eliminated and then come back again. It was, it, that was quite a roller coaster and uh come back kid what can i say <laughs> love it. I love it. um yeah best of luck with the business it sounds like you're uh, you you know staying busy and, and we hope that continues so thank you for the time and uh hopefully yeah, we'll thank you guys i soon if you guys want shirts let me know which shirt you want and send me your sizes and i'll oh, send them oh, and you're oh, right. my my oh i mean I, I thought i couldn't love you anymore karen and here we are I well mean, you know <laughs> me too uh, great. Well, thank you so much karen have a great rest of your day okay have a wonderful bye. day thank you guys bye, bye.